Another consideration of deter is, now we've been talking this stuff, that's more daylight function. Think about nighttime. You know, keeping your blinds closed, knowing all those point of entries where the bad guy's gonna be looking. You know, have them well lit. You can go down to any of your home improvement stores and they've got these wonderful solar lights that are spotlights, that are motion detected and they're really, really bright. I've just recently installed two on each side of my home area on the fence. And when someone goes into a weak point where it's a very low window to the ground that I want them to know, hey, we're watching you. It costs me maybe 20 bucks for each of these. Put them up on the fence. That's worth its weight in gold. I mean, think about it. If someone breaks into your home and you shoot them, even if you're in your rights and they die or whatever, you can have piles of, of money spent on legal fees. And I just, 40 bucks, I put two deterrents out, which is gold. So think about those things at nighttime. Where's my house not well lit? You know, these, I keep searchlights on in the backyard because that's, you know, it's an easier target area because the main road's out front, right? If you your backyard is a vulnerable spot because if someone's watching your home, they're gonna wanna come in through the backyard to get into your property. So have your floodlights on or have at least motion lights on so that when someone's walking, it doesn't even matter if it's an animal or whatever, you, you may wanna know that there's a cougar or a bear walking in your backyard, right? <laughs> You want to go out there and take the trash and you don't you get lazy you don't put the lights on and uh, you go face to face with a black bear Woo! that's a bad day let alone being with a bad guy so do yourself a favor all kinds of lighting systems to light the area up you know get outside that perimeter and test them see where you're hitting when you're walking around because you may need to adjust the lights that's a big mistake a lot of people do is they screw in these lights and all of a sudden they're pointing straight down okay great you get to, you're gonna light up where your hose spigot is and you're not, it's doing you no good. So you wanna have the light shining in the right area and you want them to cross each other. So you have crossing beams of light covering just, in the military used to say sectors of fire and they were like cone shapes and they would overlap. So no, there was no dead space and you know, cause lights, they go out all the time, you know, and you have to change them. Uh, you just want to try to avoid that by overlapping your lights. So when I survey my home, I see weak points. And these are windows where I know folks are going to try and get into. So I put the holly bushes down, like I said, right? And I get rid of anything that's a way they can step up to aid them in getting into the home. And then I go out and there's these really cool, they look great. Uh, they cost maybe 20, 30 bucks, but they're like, they look like fake rocks. And they're like solar spotlights and they're very bright. And so I shine those back towards the house and illuminate vulnerability points. Like in the military, we used to say, you know, these are these are access points. And um, so I put those little stones at every window where it could be a possibility somebody could get into. And it looks just nice on the house. It's, the house is lit up. So not only lighten up the house outward, but think about in towards your home. Have some kind of a timer system set up. You can buy these little expensive timer switches that attach to the plug. Uh, of your lights and have them on a timer so that the kind of the lights rotate around so that it looks like somebody is home. Some upstairs, if you have an upstairs floor, various rooms and you have them turned on for 20 minutes or whatever. Okay, some of you uh, energy conscious people are like, oh, you're wasting electricity and this and that. You're not really wasting anything. Think of it as an investment into your security, your defense. And those things are worth their weight in gold. So you have lights going on at various times. Some lights you may leave on all the time, especially if you're not home, because when you come in, you don't want to walk into a dark house. Not good. There was one point in my life when I was a young soldier, I wasn't living in the best neighborhood in town. It was a, a trailer park with mobile homes, and uh, we had a street light outside our mobile home, but the mobile home had, we never kept the lights on. And many times I'd walk into the front door and I'd see a shadow inside my mobile home. A mobile home! What are you really stealing in a mobile home anyway, right? I'm just a young soldier. And there'd be somebody in my home. And I'd have that street light with silhouette, my big silhouette, looking like Jason, holding a machete and a baseball bat, because I didn't have a gun back in those days, walking into my home because I knew somebody was in there. And uh, there's a little shadow of somebody, and I guess because of my mere size, <laughs> scared the hell out of them. They dropped what they were carrying and ran out the back because all they see is this big dude with a bat and the outline of a machete, and they obviously didn't have a weapon, and uh, ran out the door, and I chased after them, but they were a little faster than I and got over the fences quicker. But they dropped the bag of stuff we had, and you know, sure, it was some uh, cash that we had in a coffee can and some jewelry and, and an expensive birthday wash my mom got me, but 
that's my stuff, you know? And, and so when I had that happen, I, I sold that place, got the heck out of there, moved to a better situation. But my point is, you know, you don't want to walk into a dark home. So think about that, you know? So you're setting the conditions for success before you even get into the place. And that's a whole other subject about what do you do if somebody's in your home.